2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. Tonight's title, the, the God of all comfort, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, beginning with verse 3. Oh, so I'm on the right page. Perfect. 2 Corinthians. Please. Thank you for saying 2 Corinthians, because we are supposed to be in 2 Corinthians 1. 1, okay. 2 Corinthians 1, beginning with verse 3. Praise be to the God and the Lord, or the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are com comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Father God, speak to us. Bring this passage alive to us. May it be meat for us to chew on, to digest, and to become a part of us. Lord, may we live it, experience it, and pass it on. Lord, I pray that you teach us through your word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. You may be seated. Recently, and, and uh, I can tell you that on this property, we have had some water issues. In this building, there was the pipes that were breaking and things that were flooded, bathrooms that were flooding. And as a result, we ended up having, and, and praise God, and... A month from now, we will have beautiful new restrooms in the main building here. They look great. They look great with the new flooring and the new lighting and the new paint. And everything is going to be wonderful. We've been meaning to get those fixed for years. And the flooding forced us to do it now. And I praise God for that. Not for the flooding, but that, that it's getting done. In addition, we had a problem in our... Pump, or in our, I guess it's a pump house. The pump was going out. It was broken. And there is a simple repair to keep it working, but not fix it. We need to have a new pump. And that's going to be happening real soon. But uh, how we discovered it was one morning I got up. Do like I always do, go in, bathroom, turn the bath water on. Go back and relax for 20 minutes because it's going to take 20 minutes to fill. The water comes down, drip, 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 drip. And then there's just kind of a little solo stream. I go back 20 minutes later and it has barely covered the bottom of it. It took an hour and 10 minutes to fill that day. It took patience. It took a long time to get, I'm glad I got up at the regular time instead of late like I have been, because it did take longer. And, and I say this to say this, sometimes filling up can be painfully slow in our lives. Sometimes being filled with God's comfort and strength and encouragement can take a lot longer than we want it to take. It takes patience and it takes endurance to reach fullness. If we just say, well, I'll just make do with what I've got. We never get the fullness of God's best. And sometimes we just have to wait there. A longer than we thought we should. But I can tell you this, it is worth the wait for us to experience the fullness of God's blessings. It is worth the wait. 
In Paul's continued greeting to the Corinthian uh, Christians, he speaks in positive terms regarding abundant sufferings as well as abundant comfort. In the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, in verse 4, we read, Blessed are they who mourn for... Hello? They shall be comforted. The comfort of God cannot be poured out unless we first experience some sort of suffering. You can't be comforted if there's nothing you're suffering from. Make sense? What comfort is needed if you're not suffering? For those who suffer for the name of Christ, the comforting will exceed the suffering. You think it's bad. What God is going to pour out is going to surpass the struggles we face. And I see that in this text. I see that in this passage. Not only does God give us comfort in our troubles, he gives us more than we need so that we can comfort others. In his compassion for us, God comforts us in all our troubles. If we are willing to receive it, the Lord will pour out enough comfort for us to pass it along to others who are hurting. While many times, we don't know what to say to those going through trials. We have a unique ability of being a support to those who are going through what we already have. It's my prayer that we would experience and even share the God of all comfort with those around us. You know... A person who has lost a child prematurely is so equipped to comfort someone else who's lost a child prematurely. I can say words. I've never experienced that. And my words could be very heartfelt and meaningful, but won't have the same comfort and power as someone who's been through it. And we see that within the body of Christ, that people are suffering in different ways. And the best person to comfort them is someone who's already been there. Point number one. God comforts us in all our troubles. In all our troubles. I would say this, and the Bible says in all ways Jesus was tempted as we and yet without sin. I would include... In all ways, Jesus suffered as we do. Jesus felt physical pain. Jesus felt physical pain. Angie, have you ever felt physical pain? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You ever got hit in the nose with a basketball? Um, more than I can count. More than you can count. <laughs> We've all faced physical pain at some point in time. Jesus felt physical pain. Jesus felt emotional pain. Anybody ever been felt pain emotionally? Yeah. A friend is mean to you. Um, broken relationships. There's emotional pain. And actually, I would get to the third one, relational pain, which does have to do with broken relationships. And Jesus had a rel relational pain. He experienced that when his friends rejected him, when his friends denied him, when his friends left him alone to face the cross. Jesus suffered in all the ways that we do. Who better to comfort us as one than one who has been through what we are going through? Jesus understands our pain. God's word offers us support. God comforts us in all of our troubles, and God's word offers us support. 
But if we're going to be supported by God's word, we first must read it. If we don't read it, we won't experience that support. It takes opening the book. And I would say this, and some may not like to hear this, but when it comes to God comforting us in all our troubles, I'm going to be very blunt. Shut up and listen. Yeah, it makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Shut up and listen. When we spend all our, <laughs> our energies grumbling against God, why is this happening to me again? Why am I going through this again? Why haven't you taken this away from me again? Where are you, God? When we spend all our energies grumbling and complaining to God, we can't hear that still, small voice. that can bring comfort to us. Shut up and listen. Ask the Lord for comfort and relief, and he will bring it. Secondly, God equips us to comfort others. I've discovered through the years that all of God's blessings to us are overflowing with more for us to share with others. God does not just give us enough to get through it. He gives us enough to share it. Over and over and over again, we have been offered more. Don't turn off the receptors when there is more to receive. Like I said about the water. Well, I guess it's not going to be full. I'm just going to deal with it the way it is. Turn it off and deal with it. Wait upon the Lord as long as he is still pouring out comfort and blessing and peace and joy into your lives. Keep receiving to where it comes and fills you up and overflows through you to others. God does not cut us off when we've had enough. You hear me? God doesn't cut us off when we've had enough. Selfishly, we tend to only crave enough to get us through this present crisis. Oh, Lord, just give me enough to get through this moment. Praise be to God. I, I want more than that. And I'm willing to take more than that if God's willing to give more than that. Because even though I may get through this crisis, I may have a brother or sister who's struggling. And I may be a conduit of helping that person as well. Don't hoard any ex uh, excess for any future crisis, church. God blesses us to be blessings, not to become fat believers. I think... I think we take all the blessings of God, and I, and I see this in so much in financial ways. God has blessed us, and we have overflowing wealth and resources, and we think, well, we better store it up in case a crisis comes. And somebody next to me is struggling and in crisis. Oh, well, I'd love to help you, but I don't have enough that I can protect against whatever crisis may come. And I hoard it all for me while this person is struggling. And God says, why don't you share what I gave you so that you could share it? And I think that the same is true when it comes to that comfort. We have been comforted with more than enough so that we can comfort others. Be a vessel for pouring out God's love. In fact, I would say this basically comforting is expressing love. Basically, comforting is expressing love. Have you ever seen one of those hoses? In fact, if you're a gardener, you know what I'm talking about. That all along the way, there's holes in the hose. Sprinkler hose. A sprinkler hose. And you, you are running water through the hose, but it's leaking all over the place. Well, it's sprinkling all over the place because there's holes all along the way that's what we are we are sprinkler hoses 
God is filling us up. We are so full that we have more than we need, but we are still blessed and we still want more. And in all the process, we are sprinkling and squirting and watering those around us with blessings from God. That's good news. I want to be a sprinkler hose. Spilling out all along the way. Thirdly, our distress can serve to comfort others. The Apostle Paul took it, for the Apostle Paul, it took much distress to bring the gospel message to the masses. It wasn't easy. You know, we read scripture, oh yeah, Paul just did it like no problem. <laughs> I don't know how many beatings he went through. I don't know how many rejections he faced. I don't know how many problems that he had. But it was a burden to carry the gospel. We rejoice over the good news, but rarely think of the price that people paid to give us the good news. To illustrate, we all know Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is set aside to remember our soldiers who laid down their lives for the freedoms that we enjoy. I, it's sad. I look at Memorial Day and I think, I don't have to go to work today. But in reality, what is Memorial Day? Memorial Day is a remembrance of those who laid down their lives so that we as Americans can be free. Who fought in war and who went through the struggle, who went through the pain, who felt the distress so that you and I can be comforted. One person's pain freely given can bring about comfort for multitudes. Consider the passion of Christ. He was wrongfully accused. How many of us have ever been wrongly, wrongfully accused? I've seen it too many times, but not to the extent that Jesus did. He was, he was arrested and wrongfully accused by people who hated him and wanted to see him fall. He was rejected by friends. Peter, all, all but John, scattered, got away. Judas betrayed him. People he called friends got out of there. He was beaten beyond recognition. 39 stripes upon his back. You don't look the same. After that, he was humiliated as he walked through the streets naked, carrying a cross of wood. Sentenced to death by crucifixion, one of the most agonizingly painful ways to die. When I see this point number three, our distress can serve to comfort others. Jesus suffered those things. He went through that distress that we might have comfort. Through the salvation, through the saving grace of God. Jesus' distress gives us comfort. Are we willing to suffer and to struggle to bring comfort and encouragement to others. Fourth, our comfort can strengthen the endurance of others. Our, our, our uh, comfort can strengthen the endurance of others. You know what I want to call this? I, if you want to put a separate title on this section right here, point number four, it's called cheerleading ministry. Cheerleading ministry, right, Ange? You got you taking that down? You writing that down? Cheerleading ministry. We have been charged with cheerleading ministry. 
when we come to the end of ourselves and feel like quitting, the timely encouragement of a friend can propel us to the finish line. Oh, I just don't know if I can take much more. Oh, I believe that God's got a plan for your life and that you can rise up and you can be strengthened. There is a finish line. It's not that much further. Keep going. I believe in you. You can do it. I am praising God for you and I'm praying for you. And pretty soon that person who is ready to quit gets up and keeps going and makes it to the finish line. Church, we need cheerleaders in the body of Christ. Because there are many people who are ready to quit before the finish line. Our comfort can strengthen the endurance of others. I've got words of counselor for the encouragers. Acknowledge the pain. There's no doubt about it. It can be painful in this life. Some of the things I, I remember when I was competing in cross country, it was painful. My lungs hurt, my legs hurt, and I wanted to quit. You gotta acknowledge their pain is real. Acknowledge the pain. We call this the ABCs of comforting or of encouraging. Acknowledge the pain, but believe in the potential. Believe, yes, it's painful, but you can do it. Yes, it's a struggle. I remember uh being in the hospital with Becky when she was giving birth to Stephen. I knew she was in pain. I, and I can't even say I was feeling the pain with her because I can really be truthful. I wasn't. And I was stuffing ice in her mouth and she was getting mad at me. But I can say this. I believe she could do it. And she did. And sometimes it's that cheerleading that pushes, pushes us through when we feel like quitting. Acknowledge the pain, believe in the potential, and th uh, third, carry them with comfort. Carry them through with comfort. Many of us don't realize the power we have to strengthen another person with our mere words. We've been told sticks and stones can break my bones and words can never hurt us. And even though we say that little rhyme, let me make it clear tonight, it's a lie. Because I can tell you this, there is power in words. With words, Jesus said, let there be, or God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God gave us power to speak forth with our words, to speak forth blessings and curses, to speak life and to speak death. And I believe that when we use our words, mere words, we can bring comfort to those who are struggling. In one sense, we can create victims who feel empowered to quit. In another, we can create champions who fight through the pain. Brothers and sisters, let's create champions with words of encouragement cheering them on to the finish line. And finally, number five tonight, we share with one another. I, I see in verse seven, our hope, is, our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. We share with one another in our sufferings. When one of us is struggling, we're all struggling. You know, not only can one person bring down the mood, but when one person is struggling, we want to we be there for them and feel their pain with them. Feel the pain as you pray over a brother or sister. We struggle with them, so we need to pray and feel that pain. And I'll tell you what, the more I feel the, the burden and the pain and the struggle that somebody is going for, the more fervently I'm praying for. Feel that pain as you pray over a brother or sister. And just knowing that someone is standing with us helps us to rise above our problems. 
Mom, you've shared that you, there's people that you call, please be praying. And just by knowing that they're praying helps you to rise above. We rise above by being comforted with those who suffer with us. But we also share our comforting with one another. It's not just up to one person to comfort others. I've heard it said many times in many churches, people say that's the pastor's job. I don't have time for it. Let the pastor do it. Many a pastor buried under the other obligations attempts to strengthen and encourage all people, even though he may be unaware of their problems. I'm, I've been working on it for years, watching Seventh Heaven. And it, it's a television show that... Is made by Hollywood, but sometimes it resembles real life far more than I expected. Mm -hmm. And watching, they nail it pretty good, the pastor's family. And I understand how much of a struggle. I want to help people. Sometimes, you know, people are mad at me because I haven't helped them when I have never heard that they had a problem. Pastor, why weren't you there for me when I was struggling? Because you didn't tell me. But I got news for you, church. I have found something else to be true. People expect the pastor to care about them, but wonder, is anyone else in the church care? Sure, the pastor's supposed to do it. That's his job. What about somebody who's not the pastor? Do they care? That means even more. You hear me? We share with one another in our comforting. If we, are, if we are all looking out for one another, no one slips through the cracks. Practically speaking, pray over needs. Offer, when we hear prayer requests on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, pray over them. When we get a text message saying pray, pray over needs. Offer support when applicable. Sometimes a need is expressed and we are not trying to be nosy and we're not trying to get involved where we shouldn't get involved. But when it is applicable, step in and say, is there anything I can do to be a support? Offer support when applicable. And I found this third one to be very powerful. You tell me to pray for something and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. Next time I see you, how are things going with this situation? When we follow up, somebody says, wow, they didn't just say they'd pray for me. They really are concerned. They really are praying. It really does matter. Follow up. In closing, Jesus offered the Holy Spirit as the comforter. When he was to ascend to the Father, he said, don't worry, I'm not leaving you alone. I will ask my Father, and he will send you the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit. We are never alone in this world. Church, we are never alone. Even if there's no other human being alongside us, God is always with us through the person of the Holy Spirit. The God of all comfort has offered to bring comfort to our lives no matter what we are facing. And we have been given the privilege of being a conduit for that blessing and comfort to others. And that really is a blessing. Praise be to God. You didn't just give me comfort. You gave me the ability to be a comfort to someone else. That's a blessing. That's an opportunity. That's a privilege the more we get bogged down with the burdens in this world, the more we need to rely upon, wait for, and receive the Lord's strength and comfort. That's good news. Let's stand together. Hallelujah.